Sometimes it's just really hard to know what to read. So here are the top 10 non-superhero comics as voted on by you, the viewer. Welcome to Total Nerd Ranked, the show where we rank nerdy stuff. Eh, not really. These are mostly just books that I like that I think you should read. Have you ever wanted to attend an art school and be friends with a large cast of diverse and idiosyncratic illustration students? Well, that's kind of what Sophie Campbell's long-running romance soap opera comic Wet Moon is like. If you like character explorations, David Lynch, and people talking about their emotions, this book is for you. Sophie's been writing and drawing Wet Moon since 2004, recently concluded with a long-awaited volume 7, so now's the perfect time to get into this intricate character drama. What if a small town in the middle of nowhere outlawed comic books? Would you care? Well. Macon, the protagonist of Teenagers from Mars Wood, he's an aspiring cartoonist and he lives, eats, and breathes comics. So what does he do when comics are outlawed? He takes up arms and defends free speech and fights back against the system. If you like things like Taxi Driver, Bonnie and Clyde, or American Splendor, this is a comic for you. You talking to me? It's written by Rick Spears and illustrated by Rob G. Rob, he left comics a while ago and is now a pro chef. But we're still out here waiting for that Teenagers from Mars Volume 2. Come on, Rob, make a Kickstarter. This comic will get you riled up and rekindle your passion for the illustrated page, or it'll just make you hate that small town you're from even more. Either is good with me, just please buy the comic. Have you ever wondered what a David Lynch comic would look like if Jack Kirby drew it? Might look something like this. Kinker follows a speechless being as he drifts through space and contemplates the act of creativity. He then fights duplicate versions of himself, also named Kinker, but they're all just spelled differently? I don't know. It's a weird metatextual fever dream about the act of creation, and if we can ever escape our influences, or how life as a creator is just extremely lonely and solitary. I'm not even remotely doing this justice. It's something you kind of have to read for yourself, which is, Honestly, the highest endorsement I can give any comic. Copra is the brainchild of Michel Fife. It's ostensibly his remix on modern day superhero culture, but like in an art house way? I don't know. Think about uh, maybe Lars von Trier directing a Suicide Squad movie, which doesn't even begin to communicate how awesome the book is. It's all produced by Fife, meaning it colors, inks, letters, and publishes everything monthly. Yeah, he's a workhorse. He's self published over 30 issues himself. The collections are now going to be put out by Image Comics, so. You know, our boy done good. You done good, kid. This one's Summer by Jillian and Marco Tamaki is a deeply moving and emotionally resonant story about a young girl's summer vacation at her family's lake house. The story focuses on the awkward phase in everyone's life where you're trying to navigate the gap between being a child and being an adult. You're being exposed to these new and scary ideas and you're not emotionally equipped to handle any of them. Jillian Tamaki's dynamic yet subtle artwork really pulls the book together. She builds such a cohesive sense of character and setting with this work. It's really impressive. It also won the Prince Honor and the Coldcott Honor Awards, as well as the Eisner and the Ingnitz Award. So, you know, if it's good enough for all these awards, it's probably good enough to pique your interest, right? Everyone has some sort of crazy, one day I'll do this dream. Well, Eleanor Davis basically lived out hers. She rode her bike across the country. Every night she'd stop and make diary comics and just about the general stuff that she saw over the course of the day. Riding a bike across the US? That's hard. Making comics while riding a bike across the US? That's just adding insult to injury. Jim Rugg is the cartoonist behind Street Angel, along with his co-writer, Brian Maruka. He's crafted a charming story about Jesse Sanchez, the eponymous protagonist of this series of books. We follow her as she scourges for food in trash cans, fends off roving gangs of ninjas, and attempts to befriend stray dogs. This all-ages comic has been published by a few companies over the years. Slay Labor Graphics, Ad House, and most recently, Image. It's definitely worth a look if you're into intricate line-based illustrations, cool young protagonists, or skateboarding. Are you a fan of comics about anthropomorphic deer people? What about fantasy books? What about comics about anthropomorphic deer people in fantasy books? Well then, Temi, the psychedelic mashup of awesome 90s anime that you used to love, The Hobbit, and more than one furry book is definitely something you should check out. The writer and illustrator of Temi, Opal Pence, is just out of this world. Look at the way she draws deer people. Look at that deer person. It's awesome. And it's so cute. And also, when was the last time you said dear person? I've never said dear person this much in my entire life. Ever. Like, dear person. Dear person. Dear person. Dear person. Dear person. Dear person. <laughs> Kelly Quang is an illustrator and fashion designer based in Toronto. She has a super cool fashion line called Space Youth Cadet. If you're into anime or video games, it's probably a safe bet you'll dig her work. However, that's not what we're here today. We're going to talk about Frontier number 12. Frontier is an anthology zine and comics project that gives artists a space to create new works. Kelly was given 
number 12. This book is an in-world exploration of her space youth cadet characters. From her hallmark pixelated pencil style to her amazing character designs, this book is a wonder to behold. It's one of my favorite pieces of sequential work I've seen produced in the last decade. I honestly don't know how to sell you on this anymore. If you're not interested in this or her work after me yammering on it for five hours, you might be dead inside. I don't know what's more frustrating about Super Mutant Magic Academy that it's pure, undiluted brilliance, or that it's Jillian Tamaki's throwaway doodles. Literally. She posted it page by page on Tumblr as a cool down thing while working on this one summer. I know what you're thinking. Yes, Tumblr used to be a place. Oh, that was so long ago. Super Mutant Magic Academy is kind of like if you crossed Harry Potter with the X-Men. So it's about a school of misfit weirdos that all have powers and are kind of just really sad all the time. We follow them as they try and figure out life, love, and existing as a seemingly immortal being. Poor everlasting boy. The book was inspired by Tamaki's time as an art teacher and dealing with teenagers. And honestly, the highest compliment I can pay this work is that you could hand it to someone who's never read a comic before and they would read the first five pages and instantly fall in love and then subsequently be really depressed. And there you have it, a top 10 list of non-superhero comics that I think are awesome. Did we miss anything? Do you have any recommendations? Drop them down below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Check back next time for all the things that need to be ranked.